So real quick, here's some of the elements that we're going to be working with in this video. This is tungsten. A little bit about it. So the tungstens, they use it in light bulbs. Okay, that's one element. You can find it right here on my table of elements. Number 74 is its atomic number. And we're going to be working with carbon right there. Number 6, carbon. Okay. And carbon is right here. This is a wonderful element. Let me stand this up here so you can read it. It tells you a little bit about carbon. So it's number six on the table of elements. These are the two elements that we're going to be working with with the cold fusion reactor. Now sometimes people get these two things confused. The water fuel cell, which makes oxygen and hydrogen gas, okay? Those are my water fuel cells there in the background. And then off to the right here is my CFR. This is a little different. This is a cold fusion reactor, and I'm going to show you guys how to get that going. But first, I want to take a look at this right here, these images. Sometimes people get these Baghdad batteries confused with uh, the cold fusion reactor. I know they look very similar, but this is a Baghdad battery, and you would think, you know, this is a battery that makes electrical power. But if you look in here, this also makes electrical power. It does a lot of other things, okay? It's very similar to a cold fusion reactor. This is a very basic one, a simple one, like you've probably seen before, some of you. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these. But it's an LENR. They don't call it a low energy nuclear reaction for nothing. It's done at room temperature. See, this water is cold. Cold water. But I think a lot of people are getting that confused. You know, you can see the batteries in the background and then you can see the cold fusion reactor standing right next to them. So there's a difference. That's why you see these snakes inside these glasses and stuff. A lot of people think that's the limelight reactors, but it's not. They're depicting a cold fusion reactor and these are the images right here to build a CFR. A lot of people don't understand how to do Stanley Myers, some of his circuits. But on the left here, the low energy nuclear reaction, the circuit for the plasma link is pretty much simple. It's written out for you right here. It tells you about the chicken stick, sine wave, square wave, collecting energy. It's, it's going to show you all that right here in this image. The bowl of water, three electrodes, standing waves, and the hydrogen atom represented as a proton right there. So we'll get into that. You have to remember circuits like this produce very high voltage. This gets into electrical safety. I'm just going to film this little part for you right here. You know, it's not like a normal 12 volt power supply or a battery. When you build a circuit like this, it's high voltage. It's dangerous. You got to have a knowledge of electricity. So a circuit like this produces a much higher voltage. So if you're consuming amps, you know, you're consuming power. The cold fusion reactor uses voltage to perform the work. It performs all the work using voltage. It shuts off the water's covalent bond while restricting the flow of amps. The CFR, you gotta remember, this thing burns oxygen and hydrogen gas at 5,100 degrees at the cathode, releasing the energy from the water in the form of thermal atomic energy, but you're also producing oxygen and hydrogen gas that also is released. So you have to deal with three things going on at once. And it gets even more complicated depending on how much voltage you use. So this thing was nothing more that you see in Stan's hand right here is a cold fusion reactor. It produced high voltage. And I can prove this because you can clearly see the ceramic high voltage insulator right there. I'm working off the top right now so you don't see that in my reactor. But you have to remember that these high voltage circuits, anything like that produces high voltage electricity. Some of these circuits are very powerful. I mean, think about that when you're working with electronics. And the real blessing with the CFR is you can release our hydrogen HHO gas energy all at once without a water fuel cell. You don't need you know, an electrolysis reactor to do this. So you're burning the two ionized gas atoms instantaneously. Okay, you'll be able to do that instantaneously. It's, it's very interesting. We're setting up a condition to restrict the amp flow. 
Okay, we'll bring the amp flow down to a minimum. When you take a look at this, it's going to start out at 1.50 1 amps, about 1.5 amps, maybe 150 watts. And then it's slowly going to go in reverse. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. The first time I seen it, I wanted to run down the street and yell Eureka. Like that one guy, uh, Archimedes. That's how I felt when I first time I saw this. It's unbelievable. It goes against everything that you've ever seen with electrolysis. It goes down to half an amp and you're getting this enormous reaction and you're burning your gas. I've even got it to shoot a flame off the top of the water. If the voltage is high enough and you use enough electrolyte, flames will literally shoot off the top of the water. And you're not consuming any electrical power. That's the beauty of this. You're letting voltage take over and, and do the work. Okay, it goes down to a minimum. Voltage takes over and performs the work. Because voltage does perform work in an electrical circuit. The voltage can go to infinity. That's the cool thing. If the circuit can allow it. The result is traumatic. We're producing enormous amounts of oxygen and hydrogen gas atoms while burning an equal amount of HHO to produce tremendous amounts of steam and pressure. Now think about that. All in one cycle. I mean this reactor does everything. This is how you get the power to run the ship and to run every other single item. This is how you're going to make your gas with your water fuel cells. All the electricity comes from here. It's made thermoelectrically. I'm going to show you how that runs here in just a second. But here's all the items you're going to need. This is what your anode looks like. It's huge, massive anode, okay? Many different types you can choose. I go with the ring configuration. It works best for me. You want to get that electromagnetic field to surround the cathode, okay? I'm going to go ahead and take the AC sine wave, and we're going to convert that with the full bridge rectifier over to DC square wave. I'm going to put, here it is. Take a look at it right on the end here. You see that little tiny thing? That's the cathode, and that doesn't wear out because we're not going to run it that hard. I don't know if you can see that. That's going to empower an entire starship. This runs the reactor right here, that one little tiny thing. I know that's hard to believe, but that's what it is. All it is is a refill from pencil lead. They call it a lead, but it's really carbon. If you want, you can go to a larger electrode, but it's going to pull more amps. You can use tungsten. Let me get this thing running and I'll show you how it works. Hold on. So I'm going to demonstrate the energy that's in this reaction. The amount of energy inside a glass of water is just simply staggering, okay? I don't, I don't think us humans can actually register in our minds how much power is actually there because you can capture and reburn it and continue these processes. It's like over unity. That's not supposed to exist. You see? And there's my electrode right there, my carbon electrode. I'm going to use that, that little tiny electrode. That's how you do it. So you have a much larger anode, and then you have this tiny little electrode that's going to generate all this enormous heat on the tip of it. It's going to actually burn the water. I'm going to turn this thing on and show you how all that works. But these aliens are smart, man. you got to remember. And old Stan, he knew how all this worked, you know, Stan built a cold fusion reactor. That's what he wanted you to plug into your car with his retrofit system. That's drawing crowds at this year's extraordinary science conference in Colorado Springs. Myers has developed what is called the water fuel cell injector. The injector breaks down the water molecule into hydrogen and oxygen, and the hydrogen is what powers the car. Basically all we do is replace the, the spark plug and replace it with the water fuel cell injector that you see right here. We simply feed ordinary non-processed water, or processed water in here, and as the water goes into the injector, uh, it hits a very high pulse voltage frequency, which instantly converts it into thermal explosive energy. As a result, we can run this car and power it on water. Think about that. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you real quick this reaction. Let me turn everything on. Okay, I'm going to set the amperage here. You can see I'm pulling 120 volts. And I'm turning that into 120 volts DC. 
So you want to be careful doing this. So I'm not pulling any amps. That's the idea of this. And check out this reaction. That's how it works. You see? I can actually get flames to shoot off the end of the water. See, I'm only pulling half an amp to do that. So you're not consuming any electrical power or letting voltage take over. perform the work. So we've looked at the plasma link circuit and it tells you clearly about the directions right here of how all this stuff works and I'm sure Stan's seen a lot of this you know in his day working with electrolysis and being an electrochemist you know you're not always going to be working with uh, low voltage and 12 volts DC and reactors that look like this you know, power supplies that look like that, you're going to be running uh, much larger stuff, much higher voltage. You're going to need protection. You know, high voltage is very dangerous. Capacitors, resistors, all this stuff that's in these images right here, everything I've showed you right here in this image is all on this table. They show you how to build everything. They're talking about every single piece of this stuff. Okay? So here you can clearly see that Stan's uh, water fuel cell injector, here's the electrical circuit for it. This is high voltage DC, I'm using a bridge rectifier. This is a 1000 volt 50 amp bridge rectifier. I'm just using the wall circuit and you can clearly get plasma electrolysis. Right here is my cold fusion reactor and that's exactly what you're looking at right there. It's the same thing, okay? It works a lot different than electrolysis tanks like this where you're taking the gas apart like that. You don't have a, a water fuel cell reactor. Stan was using coils. A little bit about coils. There's many different types of coils and Stan was using what was called a resonant choke. Stan was using a choke, okay? And chokes are used in circuits to limit or suppress fluctuating signals while passing a steady current. Okay? And if you notice on the bottom here, if you cut the power to one of these things, or you pulse the circuit, you're going to create a very high voltage pulse frequency. Okay? A very high voltage pulse can be produced in a choke when the current flowing through it is interrupted. Be careful. It's very important to understand that. And that's all you're looking at right there. You can see the, the high current electrical insulator right there. Yep, that's what that is. See, I usually have one in here and that's how I get it further down in the tank. But I just wanted to show you that. It's very different than normal electrolysis. You're actually burning the water immediately. It's a, it's a very different process. such we now expose the water to a very high intense pulse voltage field and restrict the amps and therefore the electrical polarization process now allows us to release the hydrogen economically from water and by attenuating the uh, voltage field uh, the amplitude of the voltage field we now can control the rate of the production of the hydrogen gas in demand so this is what's called referred to as a constant demand generator